السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله العلي العظيم The season of Ashura and Muharram is the season of the revival of the soul. And the revival of the soul, the spiritual revival, would not take place without repentance, without going back to God. The meaning of repentance is that we must go back to God. God is our refuge. God is our ultimate shelter. God is our ultimate caretaker. It is God who forgives the sins. We must go back to God. If we seek to reap the benefit of Ashura, the benefit of these sessions, the benefit of commemorating Imam Hussein, then we must go back to God. Nothing can be fixed in our life. No social, economic, political, individual, communal aspect of our life is going to be fixed without the return to God. Without being sincere with God. And the most fundamental cornerstone of God's relationship with His servants is repentance is His mercy and forgiveness. God sends invitations to us. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, 186. Once my servants ask you about me, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am eminent. They don't have to travel long distances. You may ask then, why do we go to Hajj, pilgrimage? To repent, you don't have to go to Hajj. You can repent while you are at home, while in your village, while you are sitting in your bedroom. You don't, leave, you don't have to leave your house. But Hajj has other meanings. God wants people to repent together in the same place. And it has other benefits. Sometimes God expedite the cases when you go to Hajj, when you go to Shrine of Imam Hussein, when you pray under the dome of Imam Hussein, the case is being expedited. This is the advantage of it. But you may repent while you are sitting at home. You don't have to leave your house, your country. And it requires a solemn moment. Moment a sincere moment of attachment to God, submission to God. We have to keep arrogance and pride aside. When we deal with God, there is no room for arrogance. Humble yourself. The true believers, they are truly successful. Why? Because in their communication with God, they humble themselves. Lower yourself before God. It's worth it. God is not taking advantage of you. God is not bragging because you are worshipping Him. God says to Moses, O Moses, if you and the entire people of earth disbelieve in me, it's not going to hurt me. Neither our worshipping 
for him is going to benefit him. If we worship, we are benefiting ourselves. And if we don't worship, if we disobey, we are hurting our own selves. We are not hurting God. God says, my strategy in this universe with my servants is forgiveness and mercy. نَبِّعْ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ نَبِّعْ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Tell my servants that I am the most for, for, forgiving, the most merciful. And as an exception, this is the norm. So the norm is to bestow mercy on us. This is the norm, the general norm. But the exception is if they reject, if they insist on wrongdoing, my punishment is a severe punishment. But he deals with us first, first with the principle of forgiveness and mercy. And God has a wholesale mercy any time of the year. You decide to go back to him with sincerity. He opens the door for you. The only one who does not require any appointment. A walk-in. Walk-in. Today, sometimes, if you want to visit your friend, your parents, you have to make an appointment. But when it comes to God, God requires no appointment. Walk in. Just walk in. Any minute, 24-7. There is no working hours for God. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la noom. No slumber overtakes him, neither nor sleep, neither slumber nor sleep. He doesn't take a rest. He doesn't have a coffee break, a tea break, a lunch break. He's there. Imam Zainul Abidin, when he was circumambulating around the house of God and the sacred mosque, Masjid al Haram, was empty, he said, إِلَهِ غَارَتْ نُجُومُ سَمَاوَاتِكْ وَهَجَعَتْ عُيُونُ أَنَامِكْ وَغَلَّقَتِ الْمُلُوكُ أَبْوَابُهَا وَوَقَفَ عَلَيْهَا حُجَّابُهَا Now, people are asleep. Even the kings and the emperors, they are resting. They shut their doors and they placed guards upon their doors. The only gate which is open and it does not, would never shut, would never shut at all, is your gate. Is your gate, my Lord. The gate is open. The road is open. doesn't close. And when you decide to go to him, he would come to you in your reception. Sometimes we go to some friends and we apologize to them. I'm sorry for what I did, for, for what I said. Please accept my apology. They don't accept. They reject. They turn away from us. They don't answer your call. They don't answer your email. They don't open the door for you. But God does not do that. God always, he himself opens the door for you. He himself. You see him there. This is why he sends an open invitation. I am eminent. I'm not too far. In another verse, God says, Ya ibadi alladina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Even those who have committed excessiveness, excessiveness, horrible sins, horrible sins. What is the horrible sin? I don't know. I don't know. could be murder, fornication. What is it? I really don't know. There are horrible, horrible, horrible sins. Incest, someone who raped his daughter, his sister, God forbid, a relative of himself. This is the most horrible. I really don't know. I think all sins are horrible. God says, do not give up. 
even for those who think that their sins are very horrible and God is not going to answer them. He's not going to look at them. He's not going to respond to them. He's going to be angry at them. Still, there is room for forgiveness. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Never be despondent of God's mercy. إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَرِلِي God يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا is willing to forgive all sins, all sins, no exception, as long as you are genuine, as long as you are sincere, as long as you are true, as long as you don't play games with God. You really want to be forgiven. You are not wasting your time. You are sincere. You committed a lot of sins in your life. Now you are sincere. وَقَدْ أَتَيْتُكَ يَا إِلَهِ Imam Ali says in Dua Kumail, I have come to you, O my Lord. بَعْدَ تَقْصِيرِي وَإِسْرَافِي عَلَى نَفْسِي After my deficiency, after my wrongdoings, after the excessiveness of my sins. بَعْدَ تَقْصِيرِي وَإِسْرَافِي عَلَى نَفْسِي مُعْتَذِرًا نَادِمًا مُنْكَسِرًا مُسْتَقِيلًا مُسْتَخْفِرًا مُقِرًا مُنِيبًا مُذْعِنًا مُعْتَرِفًا I am now sad, remorseful, regretful. I come to apologize to you. I come to confess my sins. I come to say I'm sorry. I'm coming to you to grant me forgiveness. These are true words, my friends, being taught by Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Do not give up, give up on God. You may give up on any person in this life except God. Don't give up on God. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ God is closer to you than your jugular vein. God is not going to abandon you. God abandons no one in this universe. If they are sincere, if they decide to go back to God, God would welcome them. God rejects no one. Rejects no one. One day, a young man came to Prophet Moses. He said to him, I have done the most heinous things you can think of. And I want you to take me to your Lord. So your Lord can forgive me. So Moses asked him about his sin. And... When this young man confined in Moses and he told him about his sin, Moses said, no, I can't promise you. I cannot. I thought your sin is a lie, is theft, is whatever, backbiting. But you have done something so gross, so ugly. How can I take you to God? Because Moses used to go and speak with God in the mountain, in the desert of Sinai, Mount Tur. The young man said, okay, never mind. But he was not disappointed. He knew that God would not reject him. Now that the messenger of God is not willing to intercede on his behalf and to accompany him and take him to Lord, to his Lord, to God, he decided to do it himself. So he went. And he confined it in God. And he spoke some simple words. Doesn't have to be sophisticated, philosophy, philosophical, theological, Shakespearean. Doesn't have to be. With his simple, humble language. Very spontaneous. He said, God, I know I have committed sins. I was unaware. I was forgetful. Rafla. Forgetfulness. But I was not defying you. I was not defying you. I never defied you. I believed in you. And now I believe in your forgiveness. So please God forgive me. And he started crying and crying and crying. He was sincere. 
When Moses went without him to speak to God, first thing God said to him, Moses, why didn't you bring this young man? Moses said, God, I'm sorry because I felt, I thought that he did something bad that you would never forgive him. So I was too embarrassed to bring him with me. God said, oh Moses, go back now to this young man. Tell him, tell him that God loves you. Even if you said in the past, I don't believe in God, I don't love God, we still love him. We still need him. And now that he has repented, we have forgiven him his sins. He's a newly born. He's a newly born person. Go and give this glad tiding to him, Ya Musa. God is willing to give concessions, my friends. God would not accumulate cases against you. Once you say, I'm sorry and I'm really sorry, he will accept you. But then there are steps. Tawbah, repentance, requires steps. Number one, You have to feel the remorse, the regret inside your heart. Because of what you did. The sins that you have committed, you have to feel sorry about them inside, deep inside. When you remember them, you shun away from them. You feel sorry. You feel the deep remorse. You don't celebrate them. You don't feel proud of them. You don't feel happy about them. And nada ala mamaba, deeply down there, you feel the pain. Number two, al azm ala adam al awdati ilayhi abada. You make a determination, strong and a true resolution that you are not going to commit this sin again never ever never ever you go back to this sin because if you are thinking of going back to this sin this means that your repentance is not genuine in fact you are not repenting you are playing games so you decide you don't go to that sin again number three whatever damage you did by sinning you have to fix that damage. Sometimes the damage is moral, spiritual, or sometimes physical and material. Sometimes you break something. You break someone's arm. You have to go and fix it. Apologize to him. Fix his arm. Take care of him. Make him happy. Then come back to God. If not, if you are breaking someone's arm and then you say, God, I'm sorry, I didn't know, without fixing the guy's arm, your repentance is not genuine. The hadith, Hadith al-Qudsi says, Man ahzana mu'minan, thumma a'tahu dunya lam yakun kafaratu. If you make a person not not breaking his arm, if you just make him unhappy, if you hurt the feeling of a believer, then you try to compensate him through giving him the entire dunya. This entire life, you give it back to him as a compensation, it would not be enough. It would not be enough. You have to go and apologize to him. Sometimes not once. Some people say, but I went to him and I said, sorry. How did you say sorry? There was a distance between you and him. He didn't even hear what you said. And you said it reluctantly, sometimes arrogantly. When you go, you have to be genuine. You have to be genuine to people. You have to apologize. You have to have the guts, the courage to apologize to people when you hurt them. Go to them. Throw yourself on their feet. And they say, I'm sorry. There is nothing wrong with that. Apologize to people. We the Muslims, we must learn the culture, the adab, the manners of apology. We must apologize to people that we hurt in our life. Even if it takes 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. If you find them, you have to go to them. 
apologize to. Fix the damage. Sometimes the damage is physical. So you have to pay monetary compensation. Sometimes the damage is mental, psychological, moral, spiritual, such as what? When someone accuses a chaste lady, an honorable lady who belongs to a good family, he accuses her of having a relationship, for instance. Or a man is being accused of having a legal relationship. An honorable man. They want to damage him, character assassinate him. They accuse him of things that he didn't do. This is moral damage. You have to go and make your apology in public. One day someone was bad-mouthing and accusing someone else in public. But then he felt the remorse. He came back to him after two weeks. He said to him, he called him, he said, I apologize. This apology is not accepted. You damaged him in public, you restore his dignity in public too. Not privately, in public too, you have to pay the price. You have to have the guts of standing in public in the same place where you insulted him and accused him wrongly and say, I was wrong. I was wrong. What I said about this person is not right. I was lying and I apologize to that person. This is the right apology. This is the correct apology. After we do these steps, we go back to Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, إِن تَشْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ If you avoid major sins, we will remove from you the lesser sins. نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَنُدْخِلُكُمْ مُدْخَلًا كَرِيمًا And we admit you into a noble entrance. One of the mesmerizing stories of repentance is the story of Al-Hur. Ibn Yazid al-Riyahi on the day of Ashura. He had the guts. He's a decorated military commander in the army of the Umayyad. But on the day of Ashura, just before the war broke, he decided to come to the camp of Imam Hussein and apologize to him and says, I admit and I confess my guilt. Ya ibn Rasulullah, the messenger of God, the son of the messenger of God. I was the one who intercepted you. I was the one who tried to detain you. I was the one who did not allow you to go to Kufa. I was the one who brought fear into the hearts of your family and your children. Now I came to seek forgiveness. فَهَلْ تَرَى لِي مِنْ تَوْبَةِ Do you think you're going to accept my apology and to forgive my sins and would God accept my apology? And my repentance, the sentence of Imam Hussein was very short. Very short. Imam Hussein is not arrogant. Imam Hussein is the Imam of mercy, Imam of forgiveness, Imam of love, Imam of care. In one sentence, he said, In tubta tab Allahu alayk. If you are sincere in your repentance, definitely God is going to accept your repentance and forgive your sins. He switched. From this camp, the camp of evil, the camp of falsehood, the camp of arrogance, into the camp of love, into the camp of faith, into the camp of Hussein and the family of Hussein. Today he has a mausoleum. If you go to Karbala, don't forget to pay tribute to Al-Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi at the outskirt of Karbala. He has a mausoleum. He has a shrine. There is a mosque there. People go to that distance to pay tribute to him, to salute him for his genuine repentance. The night of Ashura is very painful. In this night of Ashura, historians say, وَبَاتَ الْحُسَيْنُ وَأَصْحَابُهُ وَهُمَّا بَيْنَ رَاكِعٍ وَسَاجِدٍ وَقَائِمٍ وَقَاعِدٍ وَتَالٍ لِلْقُرْآنِ This night of Ashura, it was a night of repentance. It was a night of supplication. It was a night of prayers and dua for Imam Hussein and his family and his companions. They did not sleep this night. They spent the whole night 
in adoration, in prostration, in supplication, in Quranic recitation. And they were so happy. They were hugging each other, shaking hand with each other and congratulating each other because they said to each other, tomorrow we're going to meet our destiny in paradise. Tomorrow we're going to stand before God. Tomorrow is the first day of our real life. Tomorrow we're going to be transferred to the Akhirah. Tomorrow is the day of success. And this is what happened. And this is why when we stand before their shrines, Assalamu alaikum, Ya awliya Allahi wa ahibba'ahu. This is what we say. You are the awliya. You are the true loyal friends of God. You are the ahibba, the sweethearts of God. Assalamu alaikum ya ansar deen Allah. Assalamu alaikum ya ansar rasul. We pay tribute to Hussein. To the family of Hussein. To the companions of Hussein. On the night of Ashura. Abdhamallahu ujurana wa ujurakum bi musabina bi abi abdullah al Hussein. Assalamu ala al Hussein. Wa ala ali ibn al Hussein. وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله